Well, welcome to the hillside garden and this folks, this wet stuff falling from the sky is something you won't see very often on this channel, but it's great to see it. And I thought we'd just check out a few things that you won't normally see when it's hot and dry. Uh, look at, you know, what the rain's doing, where the water's going uh, on this land. So here's the first thing. Um, this hill that leads down from our driveway, uh, a year ago I was here, more than a year ago I was here and during a really big rainstorm and I realized what was happening. The water was coming all the way from right up here, the top of the hill, the driveway. I think I'll just go and show you that. This driveway up here, the water was coming from all the way down there, rushing down here even more than you see it now. Um, and coming down here and uh, it was absolutely racing down here. I mean, you can see there's a lot of water there, a lot of water, which wouldn't it be great to have that water, you know, <laughs> in summer somewhere. Um, I'm still thinking about it, but, but what was happening, it was, it was doing a, taking a, like a left here and all rushing straight under my newly built uh, deck and then it was filling up the behind the retaining wall literally filling it up like a swimming pool and overflowing here which it's not doing now I'm happy to say it was overflowing and just um, well it's making it very dirty it was possibly structurally a problem, though I, I don't think so. Uh, I didn't put weep holes in, in this um, wall. Actually, I did underground, but not above ground, because I, the general feeling was it wasn't necessary, there wasn't enough water here, and suddenly there's all this water, right? So it was a huge problem. So last winter, I started filming a video about it, and I decided not to go into detail. I dug out this, you can't really see it now, but very well on the video, but I dug these terraces along here to slow the water down so more of it soaks into the ground, you know? That's, that's the general idea. And you can't see it now because I had to dig over it a bit more and smooth out some of the terraces, but you could really tell where the clover and the grass and everything was, was growing more richly right there where the water was collecting, which is what you want. And, uh, and there's this kind of a bank here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, uh, kind of along there, which now prevents the water going all under there and channels it over this way. So this is our lawn. <laughs> like My wife and some of the neighbors were not impressed with my um, adjustments to the lawn. And yeah, it's still a bit um, brutal. I've had to really change the, the layout and it's very kind of wavy and this bit especially I still need to think about but look what's happening I mean some of you are going like why would you do this on your lawn like waterlog your lawn you got to appreciate this is a very few times in the year when you're going to get this much water collecting on the lawn so or falling you know raining in general so what I I want I want to slow it down I want to keep it on the land I don't want it going under the deck I want it going somewhere useful. And uh, now I haven't decided exactly where that somewhere useful is, but part of it is soaking into the ground here, contributing to the water table, such as it is on this land, and watering the trees downhill of it. And not only that, see, it collects in this channel, which I need to think about what to do. You know, do I fill it with gravel? Uh, do I plant something in it that's that likes a lot of water, you know, some sort of reeds or something, or something smaller, you know, that's not going to like grow like crazy there. We don't want a swamp there. And anyway, in summer, there's not going to be water. It's going to be bone dry. Um, but what happens is, it, uh, you know, and then, okay, so what do we do with the water next? Well, I haven't really thought about it. The main thing is to, for it to collect here. But I thought the next thing might be to put this pipe here, just a kind of temporary idea. Have the water come into here. You can see it flowing in. I say this isn't very often that you get this much water in there doing that. But when, there, when it does, 
when there is that much water, it comes out of this pipe and flows down this hill. Now I can't really see where it's going right now. Um, I mean, this cherry tree is definitely getting a bunch of water, as is this hazel, which has always struggled with the dry weather. So that's something. But what I, I guess I'm hoping is, and I'll show you this uh, downhill, yeah, is this kind of terrace, which um, I also dug last winter and I didn't do any video about it, but a terrace I built above my grapevines, above my vineyard, such as it is, um, like a flat area. This wasn't here before. I want this water coming from up there. I don't think you can quite see the pipe, but the pipe is just up there. I want it all coming down the hill and then encountering this next, well, you can call it a swale uh, or a terrace. And, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of water collecting here. Now, this is also a path we walk along. So do we want a soggy, muddy path? Well, okay. So there's a slight design flaw there, but um, I think the solution to that is if, if it works and we start getting water here, which we are, you know, um, and indeed I might dig a channel, you know, from up there to, to literally funnel the water into here, uh, you know, on purpose. Then, and if it starts getting really muddy, well, we'll um, I'll lay down probably like wood chip or sticks or mulch of some kind, which will basically prevent this all turning into a mud bath and uh, be water. And then hopefully, so this water now soaks into this kind of swale that you see here and is retained in the soil and feeds the next lot of plants, which isn't very much at the moment. There's um, a pumpkin or winter squash still clinging to life there. Doubt it's gonna produce anything now. We had a really bad year for winter squash, which we've had actually the last few years. But uh, also, um, well, there's a pear which I planted, which didn't survive the winter heat, unfortunately. Um, so I'm gonna have to plant something else. But here's a pear, which seems did, uh, the did I say winter heat? <laughs> the summer heat? Uh, there's a pear that did survive the summer heat, just about, and the leaves have fallen off from the stress, but it's, it's alive. I mean, you can tell the difference in color, right? From that, between that one and that one. Um, and so again, we're slowing the water down and stopping it just running off down this hill, which is a huge problem on, on this hillside. So yeah, back up the top of the hill and yeah, we've got standing water on our lawn, which some people would be horrified at. But um, the water is on my land and not ending up down the bottom of the hill. And that's part of the name of the game, I think. And uh, I don't know if the effects of this will be appreciable, you know, when the next uh, summer comes around and there's no rain for three months and 40 degree temperatures. But it's got to make some difference, right? These trees here have got to benefit from this water soaking into the soil. And I'm gonna work on a bunch more measures. I mean, I'm just gonna keep doing this, you know, keep these uh, ideas up, trying to keep the rain on the land. And well, here's kind of an example, this, uh, the, the summer house that I built or pavilion, uh, we still don't have guttering put up. Of course, the guttering, I'm going to collect the water off this as well. And uh, you see, that's why I showed this is just dripping there and making these holes, which you don't really want. And anyway, it's wasted water. And I'm hoping to take the guttering all the way around, all the way down from the other side and shove it all, can't see very well, but put a, maybe an IBC down there or even just some kind of ditch, you know, some kind of swale. That will that will collect the water and absorb it into the soil. And speaking of rainwater harvesting, here is our very rudimentary um, rainwater collection system, which I did a video about years ago, but I've I've changed a little bit. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail now. I'll let me know if you want uh, a video about it. But um, the water comes down from the roof, runs over. This is supposed to be one of the, like a leaf pooper thing, but it's not really working because look, the leaves are all collecting up in here so I do have to clean this once in a while problem is it's not getting cleaned out because uh, 
the you know the leaves are falling now so the, the gutter is constantly getting clogged with them but water comes along here falls through leaves get left behind this is a first flush system you can't see it there's a ball valve down there aka an upturned pepsi bottle or something like that and uh this has filled up this is the first flush that's filled up with all the crud from the roof and you know the water's fairly clean clean enough now to come over here there's the old stocking method best filter out there um covering this pipe the pipe then let me just move this out of the way uh the pipe then empties into this uh, expensive funnel that i bought ordered it from uh guatemala no i'm joking uh obviously very improvised but the water is relatively clean it's going into this pipe along here and into our rainwater tank which i've also shown a couple of times and what's happening here is this is the overflow so we're absolutely full full to capacity which is great and uh off camera i'm just gonna disconnect this now because i don't really need this water constantly cycling around now so now you know we're into excess rain excess water what do you do with all the water give me some more ideas you know uh we, we've now got enough water there's water in the soil as well but uh how do we retain it how do we keep more of it on our hillside and how do we keep supplies of it uh that can be used next year give me some ideas you know i'm doing some stuff but i bet there's a lot more i could do see you next time maybe it'll be sunny next time <laughs>